Hello and welcome to another ARC tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the five tames every player needs at the beginning of their journey. This video is geared towards beginners, so we'll be covering the very basics as well as some advanced tips for these creatures that will help you in the long run. If you want to grow your skills and all sorts of other ARC related stuff, subscribe now so you don't miss anything. The first creature I want to talk about today is a Maywing. Maywings are the fastest creatures in the game and double as nannies for your breeding needs while being incredibly easy to tame. You can find them on Genesis Part 2, Lost Island, and all almost certainly on Fjorder, although at the time of making this video, it hasn't been released yet, so don't quote me on that. Maywings are knockout tames, which means you'll need trank arrows or trank darts to knock them out efficiently. And their saddle unlocks at level 19, so this should be a priority for you when you spawn in. Because they're so fast, it's pretty difficult to knock them out with more than two arrows or darts. So I strongly recommend taming a really low level Maywing and using that to chase down the higher level Maywings you see. This level 15 only took two arrows with a regular bow and got knocked out only a few moments later, even though it ran away. All I had to do was track it with the tame tracker found in the inventory menus. Alternatively, you can just shoot a net projectile at them and pump them full of trank arrows or darts that way, but you'll have to be at least level 43 for that to unlock the harpoon gun. Anyway, once you actually got one knocked out, put some mutton in their inventory to tame them. You can get mutton pretty easily by killing sheep, but if you don't have access to mutton for some reason, you can also use prime meat from sauropods and large carnivores, and also just regular raw meat if nothing else is available. Give it a bit of time and you've got a ridiculously fast glider on your hands. Honestly, I wouldn't be doing you any favors if I didn't discuss how to pilot them, so let's go over that quickly. To get them in the air, charge up their jump and release it. Then hold sprint and they'll start to glide. If you look down and pull back up, they'll glide insanely fast and get you from point A to point B quickly and easily. Additionally, you can get a ton of height by gliding them at full speed into the ground while holding sprint, then quickly charging a jump and releasing to send them very high into the air. They can also parachute with the same button you used to aim down sights. For PC, that's right click. The last thing I want to mention about Maywings is that they'll help you raise baby creatures. You can put up to four babies in its saddle, turn on feeding, and get them up to the juvenile state where they can start eating independently out of trough. Just make sure your Maywing doesn't get too hungry and it'll pretty much raise your babies for you. Next on the list, we have Pteranodons. Pteranodons are great starter tames because they're abundant on the beaches most players will be spawning on, and their saddles unlock at level 38, which most players can reach pretty quickly without much effort. These are also great for the players that don't have access to Maywings or simply don't want to put in the effort to chase one down. Pteranodons are super easy to tame. Just bowl them, shoot a couple trank arrows into their faces, and load them up with meat. You'll need quite a few narcotics if you're planning on using raw meat to tame them, but because you only need two or three arrows to knock them out initially, this this shouldn't be much of an issue. The biggest issue I run into with pteranodons is getting enough chitin or keratin to make the saddle. If you're super lucky, you'll be able to find some trilobites along the shores of certain beaches, but most players aren't that lucky right off the bat. If you're struggling, you can kill trikes and turtles for the keratin you need. Even better, if you're around some bugs, just kill those and harvest chitin from them. Regardless, pteranodons will help you out in the long run as well, because lots of trap designs require the use of a pteranodon, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Anyway, next we have to get some sort of berry gatherer, and you actually have a few creatures to choose from depending on your preferences. You'll need a berry gatherer to collect narco berries that you can turn into narcotics by combining them with spoiled meat in a mortar and pestle. The reason you need a creature to do this is because they're much more effective at doing so than your survivor doing it by hand. Anyway, take your pick. Parasaur, trike, or moss chops. A Parasaur is a tremendously easy knockout tame because you can use Ebola to stop them from running away. Additionally, they can detect enemies if you put them in turret mode. The Trike is super slow, but has insane knockback and can help you defeat very strong creatures that might find their way to you in the early game. Definitely great for very early defense. Lastly, the Moss Chops is a great all-rounder because it can fight relatively well, but not as well as the Trike. Harvests a ton of different materials for you, including fiber, which is a big one, and their passive tame. The only catch is you'll have to find find one that wants to eat berries or raw meat, some moss chops want you to feed them like organic polymer or honey, and those are really difficult to get at the start. I'd recommend a moss chops only if you can get one with ease. Moss chops also don't require saddles, whereas the parasaur saddle unlocks at level 9, and the trike saddle unlocks at level 16. I personally go with parasaurs because they're abundant, easy to tame, and their saddles are very low cost. Either way, 
this choice is yours. Next, we actually have a combination of creatures that will help collect metal, crystal, and obsidian around the map. First, find an Argentavis. If you're on Genesis Part 1 or Aberration, unfortunately, you won't be able to use one, but that's a whole series of tips for another video. Anyway, the RG is used to pick up creatures and carry them around to various resource nodes. The biggest reason for this is their insanely high carry weight and their ability to defend you from almost every creature you'll encounter. Plus, they're flyers, so they're mobile. RGs are pretty easy tames as long as you use a trap, and I definitely recommend using one because they're easily distracted and found in very dangerous areas. Personally, I use three dino gateways with a small gap at the back to fly a pteranodon through, but definitely make sure to check out Captain Fat Dog's channel for a ton of low cost, super effective, and easy to use traps. Anyway, once it's in the trap, it's just a matter of knocking it out and giving it meat. Again, you'll want to use mutton or prime for this, but if you really can't find any, raw meat will do. It'll just take a while. Once the RG is tamed, just craft the saddle which can be unlocked at level 62. Anyway, once the RG is saddled, it's time to find an Ankylosaurus. Once you've found one, either drop it into one of those little taming pens or just walk around and shoot it with trank arrows or darts. They're extremely slow, so don't even worry about them killing you. Once it's tamed, put a saddle on it and bring it around to some metal nodes. Ankies will automatically harvest metal nodes until their inventory is at 50% weight, at which point you can simply drop the Anki and manually fill it up the rest of the way. You want to use the Anki because it has a 75% weight weight reduction on metal, meaning you can carry three times the metal than any other creature in the game. Combine that with the RG's insane weight stat and you'll be an industrial metal smelting factory by a mid game. Lastly, we have any powerful carnivore of your choice. There are honestly so many to choose from. Rexes, Gigas, Wyverns, Spinos, Carnos, so on and so forth. I'm gonna be honest, you're probably gonna want most of the creatures on that list for various reasons, but I personally recommend going with a Rex for your first ultra powerful carnivore for a few reasons. Number one, they're all over the place, so you won't have much difficulty finding one. Secondly, Captain Fat Dog has the cheapest, most easy to use trap the world has ever seen. Turning Rexes into relatively low risk tames. Thirdly, they have so many different uses. You can use them to farm meat and hide, or simply to defend your base. A lot of people breed them and use them as boss fighters, which is what most of you will end up using them for anyway. They do take a pretty big chunk of resources to knock out in terms of trank darts, but if you've been smart about accumulating those resources thus far, you'll be just fine. Just remember that even if you don't choose a Rex, having powerful carnivores will keep you much safer than if you didn't have them. Dinos are the key to success in Ark, so just tame what you like once you've gotten the creatures on this list. It won't hurt. If you found this video helpful, leave a like and maybe share it with a friend that's struggling. Thank you so much for your time today, and we will see you in the next video.